It's Monday, October the 19th. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and for the next half hour, we've got your HCC news and information. Some special guests are on the way, but right now we've got our two co-hosts today. Of course, uh, Raquel Sims joining us out in Stafford. Good morning, Raquel. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here. We are doing great. It's good to see you on a Monday as you're here every Monday to update us with the ongoings out in Stafford. We'll be back with you in a little while. And Brittany Pacheco looking a little different today. Brittany, bangs, what do you got going on there? Hey, good morning, Todd. Yes, uh, I decided that, you know, I'm going to channel my inner child and bring back the bangs because I got to do something with my forehead. Um, <laughs> but a side note, I do want to take a quick, uh, just a personal personal moment uh, to wish my dad a happy birthday. He's oh, turning happy birthday, dad. He is turning 21 for the umpteenth time. I will not oh, say good. how many times, uh, but he does watch this show. So dad, if you're watching a uh, happy birthday, love you. Um, let's bring in 21 and 2020. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I do, but I do want to take the opportunity to uh, remind everyone to follow us on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And last but not least, if you our audience can click that button at the bottom that says share to share this podcast that would help double maybe even triple our audience because that's one of our goals for 2020 tide is to increase our audience it is our goal have you been outside yet this morning Brittany? yes i took luna out and by yeah. the way she was spayed last week she's doing really well now um first night was really rough my poor right. baby was whining um but she's doing really well and it is rather gloomy out well, well, number one, I'm glad she's on the men. Glad to hear she's doing better. Number two, I declared last week that we were finally past the, the end of summer and moved into fall after the false falls. I was wrong. Last week was the false fall stage two. We're now in the end of summer part three. So just for clarification, end of summer part four may arrive again in a couple of weeks but we're going to hold off on that so we'll see what happens with the weather in the next few days i feel like this is maybe a movie series that just won't end and it's just really bad dc um <clears throat> anyway moving on <laughs> moving on thanks Brittany. we're gonna be back with you in a little while um Brittany, keep an eye on the social media because we're gonna be talking financial aid today and if we have any if you have a question for financial aid make sure you type it in the comments of the section and also let Brittany know what you think of her hair type bangs or no bangs just type that in the comments as well she'll field those answers uh we've got a couple of guests joining us today and uh, helen graham is here she is the chair of the philosophy humanities and library sciences and moderator for the journey to uh you're doing something uh with women throughout history correct helen correct 100 years of women's right to vote uh That's the right. journey to today Yes, and this this is going to be a web uh, cast and we're going to talk more about that with you coming up very shortly. So stick around, Helen. We'll be back with you in a little while. And right now we've got Joe Elliott Sauce here. You've seen her on the show before and most recently you've seen her on Channel 13. She did a little segment on financial aid. Joe Ellen, welcome to the show. You're the executive director of HCC's financial aid program. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I want to talk to you about a number of things going on in financial aid, but I guess the first first things first, because a big announcement we made a couple of weeks ago, you guys are seeing folks in person again, but um, for a while because of COVID-19, we were completely online with our operations, but you're able to meet with students, but only by appointment. Well, that is correct. However, students can make appointments on the spot if there are openings. Okay. So we do encourage an appointment. So we are ready for them when they come. Uh, we've seen over 400 students in the first two weeks. Um, so we're excited to be back in person to see our students face to face. However, with safety, face coverings, very important, the face coverings. Sure. And, um, and we are ramping up. Uh, and we're starting to see more and more students. Um, again, they need to make the appointment. They can make it on the spot if there are any openings, but we encourage them to make it in advance. 
how I know a number of our students have been affected by COVID-19. Some of them have been laid off from their jobs. In many cases, like my daughter, she's a college age student. She worked full time, but now companies are cutting back on hours because they have to pay for cleaning supplies and cleaning crews. So that's uh, one of the things that impacts her. And I imagine that impacts a number of our students. Are there fine? Is there financial aid or uh, emergency aid available to those students? There is, uh, and we have been uh, searching the, uh, the planner for whatever sources we can get our hands on, uh, per se. We have uh, received, uh, just in this past couple weeks, an additional $700,000 in emergency aid from the state of Texas. Uh, and we are anxious to get those funds dispersed out to students. Uh, we are dispersing it through our swoop to the application process. So it's very important for students to go out onto our website. We have a COVID-19 page. Uh, that's where they can find the information about Swoop to the Rescue. Uh, they can click on the link. It's an online application, uh, not hard to fill out. Um, most cases, students do have to be Title IV eligible, so it's very important for students to apply for the financial aid, apply for the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA. Um, as long as they've done the FAFSA, they can go ahead and do the emergency aid application. We have very limited funds for non-Title IV aid eligible students. Most of them, you do have to be eligible for financial aid. Uh, and then we've been dispersing it out as fast as we possibly can. The deadline for the SWOOP application for the fall semester is November 20th. So students wanna get that application in as quickly as possible. Uh, we do have to have um, the state funding uh, dispersed to students by November 2nd. So time is of the essence. Um, they wanna get that application done as quickly as possible this week as po if possible. Uh, for anybody that's been affected by any kind of COVID related expenses, whether it be housing or food, loss of job, um, extra expenses because they have to um, purchase more technology for their classes. All of these things qualify and they've gotta get the application done, get it into us and we're processing them very quickly this week and next week. So if a student is having problems this semester, the fall semester of 2020, there's still aid available for them from what I'm hearing from you. Quite a bit of aid, yes, quite a bit. Um, let's go, let's talk about, I wanna talk about the FAFSA application because you, you mentioned that, especially for the spring or if you're planning on attending in 2021 or 2022. Um, have deadlines been extended or are we still on a deadline system with FAFSA? Because a lot of students may be wondering, everything else has been extended. I have the deadlines been extended for the applications. Well, FAFSA is open pretty much most of the time, uh, but a lot of the funding that we distribute through the FAFSA is limited funding. Okay, so it's not unlimited. The earlier they apply, the better. It's very important for students to get their FAFSA application in as quickly as they possibly can. The application for next fall, for fall of 2021, has already opened up. It opened up on October 1st. Uh, I encourage students to get it done now. I know fall seems like uh, a long way away, uh, but it does come quickly. And I need students to remember that the FAFSA or the financial aid, it's a process, process that takes time, process that takes applications, uh, additional forms that a lot of students need to fill out uh, and uh, documentation that we need to collect from a lot of students. So the quicker they start the process, the quicker they finish and we can get aid um, out to them through an award notification process. Uh, so if students wait until July or August to do the application for fall, uh, they will have extremely limited opportunities for funding because a lot of limited funding will have been awarded out by then. So, so it sounds like a first come first serve basis. It that, uh, it's er it better is. to get in early so you can get all options of funding. That's correct. Yep. The earlier you do it, the more options for funding. And I know a lot of our students choose the work study program. How is that working right now? Because we're in a remote environment. Um, there's very limited personnel on campuses. So if a student is interested in the work study program, um, can you get them uh, work remotely or on a campus in a limited fashion? We, we can, and we're excited um, because there's been a couple of changes to our work study program. The first one that I want to announce, and we're very excited about this, is that we have increased the hourly rate for our work study students. It was 950 per hour, 
and it has been uh, increased effective immediately to $11 per hour. So students now can earn even more money through the work study program. We have increased our, um, our agreements with off-campus agencies. So right now we have um, 27 agencies uh, with over 100 opportunities for students to work in different agencies across the city. Um, and so we encourage students to go online. The um, postings are there now, the 27 different postings. We've got another 20 coming uh, from off-campus agencies. And some of them are remote, uh, but a lot of them are still in person, um, such as the uh, Houston Food Bank, for example. The Houston Food Bank has opportunities for students to work at $11 an hour uh, to help, and they are extremely busy right now. So they yeah. could use the help. A lot of off-campus agencies, even our ISDs, our yeah. ISDs need help. And we have a number of opportunities for students to go work at the ISDs uh, and earn that $11 an hour. They just need to go online and apply. Uh, if they're eligible for work study, it shows up on their award letter. Uh, if they don't have work study on their award letter and they want to know if they may qualify, all they need to do is contact us. They can call us through our call center, make a virtual advising appointment with us, or in an in-person appointment to come talk to us to see if they're work study eligible. Joe, well, I, I know a lot of our students back in the spring may have not uh, had their best performance grade-wise back in the spring because we changed over to a new system. Some students dropped out. Some may have just quit going, maybe took a failing grade or um, incomplete. And they're trying now, you know, we're a few months into this and they're thinking, well, I want to get back to school. Is that going to affect their financial aid awardment? Well, to qualify for financial aid, it is extremely important for students to finish the classes that they start. Uh, because when a student withdraws or fails out or takes an incomplete, it does affect their future financial aid. And it, for, it, it affects their completion rates, it affects their GPA. Um, however, we do have an appeal process. So if a student does lose their financial aid because of extenuating circumstances, um, they can do our appeal process in which they can explain to us with supporting documentation what happened that caused them to lose their financial aid eligibility. Um, we do encourage students to only take the classes that they know they're going to be able to finish. So if they are having um, some challenges uh, in their home life, challenges with work, challenges with health, um, that we do want to make sure that they understand not to take too much on. You know, don't take an overload of classes. Um, students do not have to be full time to qualify for financial aid. This is very important that they can just take a couple of classes uh, and still qualify for financial aid. And then when the challenges that they're experiencing um, they overcome those challenges, then they can go back to maybe a full-time load at that point. So the students need to be very mindful of their um, classes and the ability to complete their classes to retain their financial aid eligibility. Joe Ellen Sauce here, the Executive Director for HCC's Financial Aid. Thanks for being here, some very good points. We're gonna have a link to our financial aid department in the social media post for the show. We'll see you again soon, thank you. Thank you, have a great day. You too. We're going to move on to Helen Graham. Of course, it's been a while since uh, we've seen Helen. Helen, it's good to see you again, even though it's virtually. It's good to see you again as well. So, Helen, I want to ask you, you've got, uh, you're going to be a moderator for Wednesday's webinar. It's called The Journey to Today, 100 Years of Women's Rights to Vote. Uh, let's talk about that, what's coming up, the 19th Amendment, and uh, your role in the event that's going to be happening on Wednesday. Okay, so I am a part of HCC's Women in Leadership organization, and we are hosting this webinar on Wednesday uh, from 1130 to 1230. Registration is required. Um, we will discuss the ratification, like you said, of the 19th Amendment, which allowed white women the right to vote. We will also discuss why the 19th Amendment did not allow all women to vote and why so many states opposed um, women's right to vote. We have a fantastic panel um, of an HCC instructors and students as well. So we have Dr. Samuel Hogsett, who's a historian, instructor Ruth Dunn, who's a sociologist, Christine Mompoint, who's the United Student Council president, 
and Dewey Pham, who is the United Student Council treasurer. So you want to join in and, and find out all this great information and why women were so dangerous that they did not want us to vote. So Helen, when we have a panel, I would imagine that the people watching, the viewers will get a chance to ask questions and uh, interact with the panelists. Is that correct? That is correct. The viewers will be allowed to ask questions to the panelists. Okay, and I will, so be, I will be the moderator for this discussion. Once again, um, the website for this will, how can people find it? So we have, if you have the flyer that I sent out, if you could like we'll bring that up that has, on the screen, right? It has the information. Okay. It has the information on there. All right. So we're also going to post that just the link on there in our social media post. Helen, I want to ask you about the departments that you work with, philosophy, humanities and library sciences. I know some of our students returned to campuses a few weeks ago for lab based courses. Do any of those classes have labs and have any of your students return in any shape or form so far? As not as a yet, but none of these classes have um, labs, so we don't have any students returning this semester. However, we are gearing up for students to return in the spring. And so that will require um, all of our faculty who are teaching the Flex Campus courses to be trained on the different technology that's in the classrooms now and the best strategies and practices on how to conduct a Flex Campus um, course. Well, that's what I was going to go to next was really the flex campus options because we were going to try those this semester didn't work out for safety reasons and, and guidelines, but we're looking at it next semester. What's the feeling among faculty with uh, teaching remotely and now having this flex campus option because I imagine when you're doing the flex campus you're going to be teaching remotely to the ones who are watching online and then to your class load that's in the actual physical classroom themselves. That is correct. And, and there is concern about that, um, how much time it will take away from actually the, the instruction part to ensure that those who are joining us remotely um, are able are able to tune in. So working with the technology while instructing the class, that is a concern. Um, I went through the training this past week at one of the campuses and I was pleased with the setup that they had in the classrooms. So for those instructors who are hesitant about social contact, I felt safer in that classroom than I do when I go to to grocery store. Okay, Absolutely, um, it's, it's yeah. well spaced. It's well spaced out, and the technology is not difficult to learn at all. Um, the only drawback, uh, when I teach, I'm a walker. I, I walk the classroom and I walk around. That will be limited because of the the camera. So that's something that we're that we will need to adjust to. What's been the the uh, uh, feelings you're getting from your your peers and your colleagues um, with remote instruction? I mean, we all had to change our lives back in March and really been doing this for a little over six months. How have things been going and what's been the reaction you're hearing? Um, so asynchronous is fine. Synchronous has been challenging. Um, a lot of students and instructors as well during those peak hours, it's not uncommon for them to get kicked off offline. And so they're spending a great deal of time, students and instructors alike, trying to get logged back into the system. So that's been a challenge for both our instructors and our students. And when you say asynchronous, you're talking the online anytime as opposed to the Correct. online with a schedule. And the online with a schedule is kind of built so that you can have the interaction with your with your uh, professor and uh, the classmates. But you're saying not all the time is that working? I guess you know we're always having issues. It seems like with just internet when everybody's online at one time, so that can cause some technical glitches. Right, right. And, and, and faculty as well as students. So the K-12, many of those are still online as well. And yeah. so you have, you have the parents logging into our classes, you have the students, the K-12 students logging in for their classes. And so the bandwidth is a huge problem um, just all around. And then we have problems with students actually um, using their cameras or using their microphones, which makes that interaction virtually impossible. Um, yeah to take place in the classroom. Helen, tell me, I know one of the main things that HCC has as one of our pillars is student success. What can we do to promote student success? I know you have a few initiatives that you could tell us about briefly. We do, and promoting student success at HCC, let me, 
it's going to take everyone's effort across the board. It's, it's not just limited to faculty, um, but as soon as the students make contact with HCC, that's where the student success initiatives uh, begin. But as far as our realm, what we can do in our department, we have increased our offerings, our co-requisite offerings. So these are for students who don't necessarily qualify to take academic courses. They may be on the borderline, but through our co-rec offerings, they will be allowed to take our academic courses in humanities, HUMA 1301, as long as they are simultaneously enrolled in integrated reading and writing. And so we've expanded those course offerings this semester. We've doubled them actually for our students. Um, we've also, we're also participating in the Puente program in the spring. And this is for, this program is geared towards students who are underserved. And so there are different strategies that our instructors will learn about on how to um, interact and help those students succeed in this program. Helen, we appreciate you joining us on the show this morning and bringing us up to speed with everything you have going on. Um, good luck with the conference or the webinar it should stay on Wednesday. We're all looking forward to it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Uh -huh. We're, we're going to move on to uh, Stafford. And of course, uh, we've got Raquel Sims out there. And every Monday, Raquel works for our Stafford Municipal Television Station. It's a partnership with HCC TV. And um, you uh, bring us updates from the city of Stafford in Fort Bend County every morning. What do you have going on this morning? Good morning and thank you again so much for having me, Todd. So um, we're excited. Um, Fernando Ramirez, one of our videographers, had a chance to speak with two cheerleading programs. The first one was the cheerleading program, the high school cheer team at Stafford High School. And he pretty much brought us up to speed with how they're doing things. Yes, we know football season is in session for you know the high school. So what are the cheerleaders doing? How are they supporting the team? So um, they're doing things virtual and they actually have virtual tryouts, which is interesting you know, to have that that interaction through the computer when trying to select the team. So we talked to them as well as Apex Cheer in Stafford, which is a competitive cheer program and how they're, you know, practicing all of the safety, um, the guidelines to ensure that they're providing a safe environment for individuals to come out. You know, I don't know about you or like just anyone else, but I love activities and extracurricular activities. So to see them still provide that outlet for them it just really is exciting so he was able to talk to them um and randall williams actually had a chance to speak with the child advocate perhaps Fort lost Bend. in all they the election new news child advocates of Fort bend has established a, a new way to serve their community so um well we are um, so excited to open up well. a new clinic week, for children a pediatric the high school uh, dance team clinic that will be they're doing and how um they're keeping things up and up and they did virtual trials as well so i talked with the um the director so just excited to share that with y'all and if you are doing so as well please follow us on facebook at hcc stafford tv studio and on our twitter page at hcc sw tv stafford and please subscribe to our youtube channel to keep up with the latest and if you want us to search any other of our old features you can do so there and that is hcc stafford tv studio and thank you again for having me Thanks, Raquel. Thanks for bringing us up to date out there. Stick around. We'll bring you on later in the show. I'm going to move on to Brittany Pacheco and her new bangs. Brittany and her bangs joins us again. And uh, Brittany, I want to move on to a subject that is very uh, important. Um, this one's clarity, confidence, confidence and creativity, the science of dealing with stress, people and life. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a hot topic, especially for everyone who's returning back to the physical classroom, you know, HISD, for example, those kiddos are going back into the classrooms today. Hey, you guys, shout out to my husband, you guys can get through it, it's going to be all right. Um, but this clarity, confidence and creativity, the science of dealing with stress, people and life is going to be presented by our HCC Northwest Counseling Department featuring Dr. Bill Crawford. This is happening today via Zoom at 3pm. Now you can participate and get more information by contacting estelle.sit, that's E-S-T-E-L-L-E dot S-I-T at H-C-C-S dot E-D-U for more information. Again, it's happening today at 3 p.m. via Zoom. 
That's right. Another thing you're excited about, Brittany, is uh, Rec Sports Fall events. They're happening right now. And uh, well, not right this second, but they're going on all virtually and uh, they're very busy. Today, they've got deep stretching that's happening. And Tuesday and Thursday, Zumba and boot camp. Last week, they had twerk fitness with the V sisters. Uh, for all that and more, you can email the folks at Rec Sports. We'll have uh, their email address in the social media post. And HCC's continuing ed classes, they are continuing uh, from accounting to welding. Uh, they start weekly and monthly. You can learn more about all of our CE classes at hccs.edu slash CE. Uh, I want to ask Raquel, have you... Uh, have you been promoting the um, all in for HCC campaign because that's going on through November the 6th and it helps folks raise money for the foundation. Yes, um, that is an important fact. Um, time is closing in on the deadline for everyone um, for the payroll deduction to help our students through the all in for HCC campaign. It's a great thing to pour back into the students, to, into the students. So some students need our support to graduate. So we as faculty and staff are encouraged to sign up for this payroll deduct plan today to make an impact for the whole year. Um, it ends on Friday, November 6th. So please, the deadline is kind of approaching. So make sure that you fill out whatever you need to fill out and make sure that you donate. And you can go to hccs.edu slash all and for HCC. Again, the link is donate. Um, go to hccs.edu slash all in for HCC. And of course, everyone loves the hashtag. And we have a hashtag for all in for HCC. <laughs> Thanks, Raquel. Um, intimacy and Love Scholarship. This is another way of getting some money for our students, for students particularly. Brittany, uh, this involves the counseling office. Yes, so the counseling office is offering a uh, opportunity for students to receive a $250 scholarship through uh, the means of a 500 word essay or any artwork that deals with intimacy and love. So you students can share your love for art, prose, and your fellow man by applying. So two scholarships are actually going to be awarded. That's again, $250. Hey, free money, right? But you do need to have a at least a 2.0 GPA. That is a requirement. So if you're interested in this opportunity, the deadline to apply is November 9th. You can email hcc.healthyrelationships at hccs.edu for more information. Uh, students, we have an online services toolkit available to you, textbooks, technology, you got questions on those, tutoring, well, you can go to hccs.edu slash online hyphen toolkit and uh, get all the information you need. And Brittany, um, speaking of tutors, the Academic Success Center tutors are available for our students right now. That's right. So they can meet virtually through Microsoft Teams, thanks to HCC's Academic Success Center. And they help with coursework, which is very essential, of course, for students to be successful, to understand their assignments, and also improving their study skills. Now, we will post that link in this post, so be sure to check out the actual text of this post for the information to access the Academic Success Center tutors. That's right, and uh, if you are still needing COVID testing, four of our area locations have COVID testing on site. We'll have links to that information as well in the social media post. That pretty much wraps up the show for today. I wanna to thank both of you for being here. Of course, uh, Brittany, we've got a big show tomorrow. We do. So Antrice Baguette, who's the History Faculty Associate Chair, will join us. And as a member of the fac Faculty Senate, she is also on the committee that reviewed the current mandatory training on stalking. That's going to be interesting. And she's also going to be joined by Osvaldo Gomez, Deputy Title IX Coordinator from the Office of Institutional Equity, also on that same committee, who will give the OIE background and perspective for this important topic. So uh, do not miss out on tomorrow's show. Thanks, Brittany. And Raquel, thank you for being here, bringing us up to date with things going on in Stafford. Check back in again with us next Monday. Yes, I'm excited. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Raquel. Thanks, Brittany. And thank you for joining us today. Most importantly, we will be back here tomorrow on Up to the Minute. We're live every morning on Facebook at 10 a.m. We hope to see you there.